Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Yeah, well, uh, we have uh, just discussed how uh, Christian religion, which is being uh, sort of guided by the Western ideas or Western science and technology, happens to pretty much little and then seem to be much more responsible for the uh, present ecological crisis which we are facing now. Now, uh, moving a bit different from what uh, uh, Christian religion talks about, we'll try to look at how uh, to locate the Buddhist teaching, if not uh, the kind of biodiversity conservation ethics which prevails in Buddhism. And uh, I'm sure you all know like how uh, Buddhism or the religion Buddhism emerges and who is the founder. So, I did not go into detail, presuming that you all know Now, uh, we'll try to uh, discuss few points uh, what are being addressed in some of the classical uh, religious textbooks of uh, Buddhism uh, of their sort of closeness to uh, nature. Now, Buddhism in a way view humanity as an integral part of nature, so that when nature is defiled, people ultimately suffer that is if we are causing some kind of uh, a negative act the consequences in a way will be you know uh, how people stands to uh, not just uh, ultimately be harmed now therefore these negative consequences arises when the culture in a way alienate themselves from nature and when people feel separate from and become aggressive towards the natural system. And also, uh, when we abuse nature, uh, we tend to forget that we are also abusing ourselves. Because uh, uh, this is because we, when we uh, sort of create a dualism between human and nature, or maybe rather a dichotomy relationship is maintained. Now, when we see human pretty much uh, close and in relationship with nature, we will not really engage ourselves in harming and uh, abuse nature. Now, uh, one of the um, book, uh, books on this uh, Buddhism that is the Jataka in a way uh, also uh, glorified the birth stories of uh, Buddhism and also that is uh, Buddha, which, which are abundant with poetic appreciations of nature. That is, if you look at uh, the Jataka, then in every passages, uh, there are importance which are given on the uh, forest, waters and earth's wild creatures. And uh, the arts and aesthetics are pretty much being enshrined in the book of this Jataka. And uh, almost all Buddhist literature in a way states that the Buddha was born in a grove of salt, that is a lovely straight back trees with large leaves. This salt tree in a way is also uh, sacred to many uh, religious group, particularly Buddhism and Hinduism. And uh, uh, the Buddha's father, in a way, uh, in, in, in his search for this uh, quest for this enlightenment, was in the company of a Banyan, and as we said, the ultimate, that is, the enlightenment, was under the spreading branches of a tree. 
and uh, which was recognized for its uh, special place in human faith, even in its scientific name, that is the fic Ficus Religiosa, that is the scientific name. Uh, therefore, the tree or the forest happens to be right from uh, the period when Buddha was born and at the same time till the time when he attained his enlightenment. Uh, he was pretty much you know uh, close to nature and then live in the forest rather. And if you look at the early uh, Buddhist community uh, which were small in numbers, uh, they, they tend to live in forests and the large trees in caves and in mountain areas. Uh, I'm, I'm sure like if you all have visited uh, uh, the state in Orissa, uh, where in the, a place in Hathigumpa where uh, uh, the monks normally during uh, the period of uh, Asoka, so to say, uh, happens to live uh, in forests normally under the cave of a st stone. Now, this early Buddhist community live in forests uh, li under large trees in caves and in mountainous areas. So, I presume that uh, the place in that Hathigumba in Orissa is still uh, something which one can witness and visualize how the early Buddhist monks could have survived and live in the uh, natural surroundings. And uh, as a result of this, they are directly dependent on nature and they cultivate uh, great respect for beauty and diversity of their natural surroundings. Every health, uh, healthy forest is also a home for wildlife. So, when a monk accepts the forest as his home, he also respects the animals who live in the forest. That is, uh, the animals are not seen as something which is different, but also a part or a family rather, members of the family. The early Moody's maintained this kind of friendly attitude towards their natural surroundings and opposed the destruction of forests or their wildlife. Now, therefore, uh, since they have that direct uh, <clears throat> exposure to the environment or to the natural surroundings, they, they tend to uh, sort of uh, perceive uh, uh, or the attitude they have shown to the natural surrounding is that they should not destroy the forest or the wildlife or rather they should not be harmed. Now, uh, in the portion in this, the Sutta Nip, uh, Nipata, one of the earliest texts of the Buddha says that, uh, know ye the grasses and trees, then know ye the wombs and the moths and the different sorts of ants. Know ye also the four-footed animals, small and great, the serpents, the first with rains in the water, the birds that are born along on wings and more through the air. Know ye the marks that constitute species are deers and their species are manifold. Now, therefore, uh, it, it, it in a way highlight that uh, one needs to be familiar and then pretty much uh, have uh, a wider knowledge and understanding of uh, not just uh, the immediate surrounding, but what what us not just the human, but also the other uh, grasses, trees, the animals, even the tiniest one. So, therefore, its uh, species in a way contribute or uh, have their own purposes. Now, uh, therefore, uh, Buddha in a way was uh, pretty much uh, uh, in, in support of uh, people's perception and understanding of knowledge. Now, what is this the precept of Buddhism that is the principles or the guiding principles of Buddhism. Remember, each and every religion has their own guiding principles or maybe on, on the foundation on which uh, it is being uh, founded. Now, the first precept of uh, Buddhism uh, 
uh, explicitly says that do not kill. That is, one should not engage in harmful activities, violence. This precept is not merely a legalistic prohibition, but a realization of our affinity with all who share the gift of life. That is, a compassionate heart provides a firm ground for this precept. Now, the first and foremost, for ones to you know not engage in killing something, is to have a compassionate heart. That is, if you have that compassionate heart, I mean, the, towards anything, uh, you 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 can in a way have that kind of uh, uh, symbiotic relationship with the species. The community of monks are also uh, in a way forbidden by, by the Vinaya that is uh, one of the texts, uh, the ancient rules of conduct from eating 10 different kinds of meat, mostly animals of <coughs> the forest uh, that is uh, which are not domesticated. The Buddha in a way taught his disciple to in a way communicate to animals their wishes for peace and happiness. So, if one have this compassionate or compassionate at heart, uh, one can be, one can maintain the, uh, a peace and happiness even with their fellow animals. Now, these are some of the precept of uh, Buddhism that is the founding principles. Now, Buddha also in a way uh, talks uh, pretty much uh, eloquently on water conservation that is how uh, the Buddha set down rules forbidding his disciples to you know contaminate water resources, not to engage in polluting or uh, putting a waste on resources. For example, monks were in a way dissuaded from throwing their waste or left our foot into rivers and lakes and uh, they were also urged to guard the lives of all living beings abiding there. That is uh, not just uh, contaminating or uh, polluting, but rather to necessarily protect and then guard the lives of all living beings which are inhabiting that place. The, now, in the Vinaya Pitaka, Pitaka there are detailed descriptions of uh, how to build toilets and water wells. Uh, in a way, uh, you can compare with the present or the current uh, government which strongly uh, sort of projected the idea of the Swatch Bharat campaign of uh, not engaging in the littering and then um, open defecation of which every household are supposedly to have a toilet. Now, this was this is something which we are talking about in the medieval period uh, or uh, much much earlier than that. Now, in the Vinaya Pitaka, uh, there are detailed descriptions of how to build toilets and water wells. Now, which means uh, every kind of garbage or something which are unwanted should not be you know uh, uh, spread rather it has to be exposed in a more hygienic manner. Now, therefore, uh, it, it not only talk about this conservation of water, but also rather uh, maintaining of uh, hygienic sanitation. One of the eight qualities of the ocean is cleanliness and another is that it must be the abode of various kinds of fish and not necessarily fish, but also other uh, creatures uh, as you all know like tortoise so and so forth. Now, therefore, uh, if you look at the present ecological crisis which we are facing now, we all know how the oceans are being polluted and then uh, as a result of this contamination, we can all we, some, we also seldom uh, witness uh, big big fishes which are being killed swallowing up of those plastic items, toxic items, so on and so forth. Now, perhaps these uh, great minds or great intellects 
I would say, the enlightened, they were in a way being guided or they might have foresee that if one wants to, you know, have a healthy or if not uh, to live in a very safe environment, one should not engage in polluting. Because the amount of uh, waste dumping toxic items which are being disposed of not only to the ocean, but also to every, every parts of the earth surface. In a way, we are facing the brunt of it, because we abuse and then we are facing the brunt and the consequences. This is something more to do with uh, sort of a cyclical or a chain uh, reaction. Now, we, we cannot afford to see, th see things in a more uh, non-linear way or, or maybe in a more uh, non, non repetitive rather so. Now, Buddhism in a way also holds a great respect for and uh, gratitude towards nature that is uh, they tend to perceive nature as uh, the mother that gives rise to all the joyful things in life. So, in a way uh, uh, the idea of this mother art is something which is also being followed by uh, Buddhism that is in terms of their you know respect and gratitude towards nature. Now, if you look at the Mitta Sutta uh, thus as a mother with her own life girds the life of her own child let all embracing thoughts for all that lives be thine. So, this sort of uh, respect and uh, mutual you know uh, caring and nurturing is something which is also expli explicitly spelled out in the Mita Sutta of the Buddhist text. Now, uh, in, in one of the lectures of uh, His Holiness the uh, Dalai Lama that is the 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet uh, who also is a strong supporter or a strong proponent of Buddhism. Uh, in a way has repeatedly his concern for the environmental protection that is uh, he raised an idea that our ancestors viewed the earth as rich, bountiful and sustainable. Uh, <clears throat> because if one wants to flourish and then uh, stay as uh, a human or uh, a people one needs to uh, sort of uh, take care of uh, the surroundings in a more responsible way. Now, therefore, if we consistently engage in harming and then exploiting the nature, this idea of this uh, rich, bountiful and sustainable will perish and then it will be reversed that is the other way around. Now, therefore, uh, uh, the Dalai Lama who is also in a way uh, propagating and then professing Buddhism also express his strong concern for the environmental protection in the international firm. Now, uh, we also know that uh, uh, this is the case, but only uh, that is if we take care of it. Uh, in, in one of his recent speeches on the subject of ecology, he pointed out that the most important thing is to have a peaceful heart that is a compassionate heart. So, if one deviate from this uh, or maybe uh, be obsessed with this hatred, jealousy, greed, then the, there is no solution to it. So, the only way out or the only solution is to have a compassionate or a peaceful heart that is only how we take care of you know uh, things around us. Now, uh, uh, there is a place in Thailand where the uh, Buddhist monks are engaged in uh, the wildlife fun project wherein uh, they you know uh, tame and domesticate those animals. And uh, it, it happens to be a very successful project because uh, 
if you have maintained that kind of balance and that sort of a compassion with the animals, it in a way uh, tends to you know like uh, espouse the kind of uh, the richness and the bountiful and uh, 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 sustainable uh, possibilities of the earth surface. Only when we know the true, uh, we understand the true nature uh, lying within, we can live harmoniously with the rest of the natural world. So, in a way, self-realization is also important. That is to realize the base, basic essence of nature. In fact, uh, Buddhism can be meaningful only when it is relevant to our everyday life and to our environment. Now, uh, having said that, in as mentioned in the religious text of uh, maybe uh, to engage not in harming or to engage in violence, also one should uh, engage in you know conservation of water or uh, maybe the nature. But all having said, and uh, how it is to be executed, that is if we are in a way to you know uh, see the relevance of Buddhism in the present context and how are we going to apply the application or the implementation part is something which we all need to you know sort of reckon with. Now, the Buddhist tradition in a way counsels us to treasure and conserve nature of which human beings are an active part that is in our everyday life we are in constant engagement and we can in a way do a bit of conserving nature. Now, uh, as uh, we had partly discussed uh, in the ecological crisis from the viewpoint of the Christian religion of how Christian religion which is guided by the you know western science or western science modern science and modern technology in a way is responsible and have affected the nature or exploit or abuse nature like anything. But uh, in the context of uh, Buddhism again uh, way back from the you know 16th century uh, how Buddhism emerged and uh, the founding father that is Gautam Buddha in a way uh, denounce worldly pleasure that is uh, accumulation of wealth and uh, certain other uh, worldly uh, pleasures and, and also explicitly pointed out that uh, not only to engage to abstain oneself from uh, you know harming or polluting if not using violence against uh, nature, but also to uh, partake in the uplifting if not protecting nature and, and this in a way will uh, uh, be able to you know uh, maintain healthy and uh, the bountiful or the bountiful uh, bliss and uh, nature or uh, the beautiful nature can in a way be realized and uh, how uh, a sustainable world can be established. So, the question which remains uh, from what we have discussed is how to make the or how to situate the relevance of Buddhism in the present context uh, or it, it in a way uh, allow us to you know uh, to contextualize us in a position of retrospection, how we try to position ourselves in nature. Are we uh, in a position to you know uh, do things in a free will or in a what much more you know take part in uh, protecting nature. So, uh, you can uh, refer this on the Buddhism that is the early Buddhist views on nature, uh, which it is an ec extract uh, from the book by Alan Han Badiner and which is written by Kabil Singh. 
So you can perhaps read this and uh, it's a uh, uh, retaliate the kind of stance which is being posited by Lin White. Thank you.